Hello everyone and welcome to our Maundy Thursday Communion, although it's rather different from usual. Each year I've begun when we've met together on reminding us what Maundy means, so if you've heard me before you'll know this already. It comes from the Latin mandatum novum, a new commandment, so it could be called Commandment Thursday and it comes from the new commandment that Jesus gave his disciples, which by this time in his ministry it wasn't new at all to love one another. So although we can't share food this evening, we can still love one another and share our lives with each other. Uh, this communion service was written by one of my colleagues in ministry and I thought it'd be helpful for us to use it this evening. So she wrote, find a quiet space, a space to be, and take a moment to lay your day, your week before God, to say sorry for the things you've done wrong, and to rest in his presence. And if you're doing this in the evening, you might want to light a candle to remind you that wherever you are, whoever you're with, Christ's light will always shine. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. At this time when we're unable to meet in person because it's not safe to leave our homes, we gather in an unfamiliar way, but we gather to remember that many others sit with us on the, at their tables and to eat bread and to drink wine. As we break bread and drink wine together, we remember that we're part of something far bigger than what is in our homes, bigger than even when we meet in our church, that we're part of a worldwide church where this meal is a familiar meal where bread broken and wine drunk is a remembrance meal that speaks of the time in an upper room as the disciples gathered with Jesus on the night before his death. Let me read you some words from Mark's Gospel. On the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left and went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. And so they prepared the Passover. And so today we gather at our different tables, tables of many sizes and shapes. Each table tells a story. And today the story it will tell is the story of 2,000 years of history, where the people of God have gathered and eaten and drunk to remember the first time that Jesus did this, on that first Thursday, the day before he was to go to the cross. And as we gather this evening, scattered in the community, this story brings us together and reminds us that we are not alone. We gather with those we know well who are part of our story, who we see on screens and hear through the telephone. We gather with those we don't know who are joining our story because all are welcome here. We gather because we love one another. We gather because we are broken. We gather in our fears, in our worries, in our sickness, and we gather to share this story that brings us together. And as we gather, we tell his story, which is our story too. We gather at the table with bread and wine, scattered and yet together, to give thanks through this meal. So let's pray and give thanks. We gather here, gracious God, struggling with being separate, but glad to be together. We give thanks for all you have given us, for this beautiful world we live in, for family and friends, some of whom are with us and some of whom are far away, for food, for our homes, for the telephone and for the internet, for those we know who are working on the front line, who are serving and caring and sacrificing for others, for all those things that make our life as full as it can be right now. We offer our thanks and our praise. 
And we thank you for this bread and this wine on different tables, in different cups, on different plates and in different places, but all symbols of your body broken and your blood shed for us. We thank you for your story, which is our story, a story of redemption and new life, a story of restoration and forgiveness. We thank you that this meal speaks of healing and of mending and of love so deep it is beyond all comprehension. We sit together yet scattered and we praise you, Lord. Amen. Mark continued and wrote this. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And then when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So take your bread and break it. This is Jesus' body, which is broken for you. And though we eat from many loaves, we remember that in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each belongs to all the others. Eat the bread, and remember that Christ calls you to be his follower. He welcomes you as his friend. He calls you his family, and he invites you to become part of his story. Take the wine and hold it. This is Jesus' blood which is shed for you. And though we drink from many cups, we remember that in Christ, we, though many, form one body and each belongs to all the others. So drink this and remember that Christ died for you and he offers you forgiveness. He calls you his own and he restores your soul. The disciples left that upper room and they walked to the Garden of Gethsemane and in the garden Jesus called them to pray and he called them to wait and he called them to wait with him and they waited and they waited for the events to come and it was going to get worse before it got better but as we approach tomorrow we remember the cross and all that is to come. But beyond tomorrow this story brings, speaks of hope, of new beginnings of a time when the loneliness at the cross will become the glory of the resurrection. But for now we wait and we watch and we pray. So let's close with a prayer together. Lord God, we praise you as the God whose love is active in the world. We ask that in your mercy we might overflow with a love for you that spills out into our world as living proof of your life-giving presence. Help us to hear your voice in the conversations we have, in the news reports we hear, in the strangers we meet, in the brothers and sisters we like or dislike. Help us see your face in the war-stricken refugee, in the hungry and the homeless, in our close friends and our worst enemies. Help us to do your will even when no one sees it but you, even when we feel overcome by the world's problems, even when we feel we can make little difference. And by hearing your voice and seeing your face and seeking your will, make us instruments of praise whose words and actions and lives become a living example of the forgiving, healing, life-giving love of the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen.
grow dim And I'm fooled by the lures of sin Savior, keep me watching and praying Jesus, would you come to me? Lead me through Gethsemane So my heart will always be with you When my fears abound And my sorrows drag me down Say So oh.